celebrating the bicentennial of the Constitution. Tonight at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Sponsored by IBM. Next, from the information source, the Newsmaker Show. Now, time for a look behind the headlines. The WLEA Newsmaker Show. With host, Kevin Dorn. As you know, Pope John Paul II is now in the second part of his second trip to the United States. And we're very privileged to have back with us again this morning Dr. Malachi Martin, a theologian, a papal scholar, the author of 14 books. His latest, The Jesuits, an expose of the Jesuit order, a bestseller, soon to be out in paperback, by the way. So, uh, Dr. Martin, welcome to our program, and, uh, and thank you for having me a second time. Well, we appreciate you giving us your time. Now, we're about halfway through the Pope's visit, and there's a term that keeps popping up uh, in the television coverage and in the newspapers, too. It's a term that I don't think we've heard too much in the past. The term is American Catholic Church. Now, we all know what the Roman Catholic Church is. I wonder if you could explain to me what they mean by the American Catholic Church, and in what ways are they different? Well, at the present moment, it is now about a quarter to or 20 to 9 uh, Eastern Standard Time, and the Pope is saying his own Mass and preparing to meet the bishops of America at 9 o'clock um, California time. And at that meeting, this is precisely the main theme we will run through every remark made by the Pope and by the bishops. The American Catholic Church is the new church uh, that at least one half of the American bishops and uh, certainly one-third of American priests and, and some lay people are endeavoring to establish. It is a church independent of Rome in authority that makes its own rules as regards morality and makes its own rules of worship and decides what it is going to believe. It is an endeavor to create a church within a church and pretend that it is Catholic. It is the self-service cafeteria pick your church attitude, you know, uh, let me choose the red jello over the green jello because of my dentures, um, with the idea that you can uh, become, be a Catholic and still accept only those part of uh, Catholicism and the Roman Catholic Church that you wish. Now, speaking to these bishops today for three hours from 9 o'clock until 12 o'clock California time, um, he will have in front of him those bishops who are endeavoring to set that church up, the bishops themselves who have, for instance, authorized an ecumenical service at the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception of Our Lady in Washington, D.C. on September 23 at the hour of 6 to 7 in the evening, conducted by no less a person than the Dalai Lama, who is an atheist. That's a desecration of Our Lady's Shrine, but it's quite in keeping with this American church. It is Cardinal Bernadine of Chicago who contradicts the Vatican when it forbids in vitro fertilization. The Cardinal will allow that and thus opposes the doctrine of the Church. It is Bishop Head of Buffalo who conducts dignity services. We, uh, uh, it is, uh, Dr. Martin, what is dignity now? Before dignity we go? is an organization of homosexual Catholics who insist on going to Mass and receiving Holy Communion while living homosexual lives actively. And uh, it is every bishop uh, who, who is his Archbishop Borders of, uh, of um, Baltimore who sanctions the teaching of homosexuality to young boys who feel inclined that way. Uh, it is Bishop Clark of Rochester, New York, uh, who insists on opposing the Vatican in the matter of altar girls. Uh, uh, and it is Charlie Curran who uh, opposes the doctrine of the church in belief and in moral practice. And Richard McBrien, Father Richard McBrien of, of Notre Dame, Indiana. Uh, of Notre Dame University, who also contradicts the Vatican and teaches non-Catholic doctrine. And it is Sister Margaret Traxler of Chicago. And uh, it is all the, the, the main leadership of the, of the Leadership Conference of Women Religious who oppose the Vatican in belief and in practice on abortion, contraception, the divinity of Jesus, mm -hmm. the existence of mortal sin and hell and heaven. In other words, they want to create a church where you pick and choose what suits you. And they're endeavoring to set this up. They haven't got a ghost of a chance, but they're doing a lot of damage and dragging a lot of Catholics away from their traditional beliefs. Now, the Pope is here to remind the bishops and the clergy and the nuns and the people, but primarily the bishops, since they are the pastors, that they are only Catholic if, 
when they are in communion with him and spreading and propagating the doctrine that he preaches. Because the old saying still holds, wherever Peter is, there is the church. And uh, John Paul II represents Peter the Apostle, who represents Christ. Uh, Dr. Martin, you said that <clears throat> you mentioned a lot of people there that were, that were leading this American Catholic Church, and you said that they are promoting various ideas which are not in, uh, well, they're simply not what Catholics have been taught over the years, and they're not what the Pope is saying. However, these proponents of the American Catholic Church that I've been seeing on television say that they can find justification for their positions in the Second Vatican Council and in the teachings of some of the theologians. Well, first of all, they are telling sometimes outright lies about the Second Vatican Council. They read it as they want to read it. If they read it exactly, there isn't one unorthodox statement in the Vatican Council. There are statements that can be uh, interpreted one way or the other um, if you leave out the phrase going before or the sentence going afterwards. And that's what they do. Like, for instance, the Council speaks about the, the sense of the people, the instinct of the Catholic people. This has been quoted by so many of them to justify the people doing anything they want, like abortion, contraception, uh, homosexuality, etc., euthanasia. But in that same text, it says that the, this instinct of the people must be guided by the Pope and the bishops in union with the Pope, and so on down the line. There's a misinterpretation of Vatican II, which is sacrilegious and enormous. Let's talk about one of the, the men you mentioned, uh, you said was a leader in this new American Catholic Church, uh, Father Charles Curran. Now, he was at Catholic University, right. and uh, he was subsequently fired, to put it very bluntly. Right. However, he came back to his home diocese, and this is his home diocese, Rochester. He went to Ithaca, right, and he holds a chair in Ithaca, the chair of uh, Catholic religion, uh, Catholic teaching, rather, in Ithaca. He still has a very, very important role to play in the media. He's very influential. He is very influential because he's a spearhead and, uh, of rebellion and schism and heresy and uh, sacrilegious doctrine. Uh, Charlie Curran, Father Charles Curran, uh, says there is nothing wrong with homosexual uh, practices, there's nothing wrong with abortion, there's nothing wrong with contraception or masturbation, and in fact euthanasia could pass the master too. And on various other points of belief, Charles Curran is not merely a wonky, uh, he is downright uncatholic. But Dr. Martin, my question was, if he is all these things, yes. how is it that he's allowed to continue to function at Ithaca at Cornell University he can still be quoted widely. Why isn't he, in short, why isn't he defrocked? Because his bishop, Bishop Clark of Rochester, is a bishop whom we know is in favor of the American Catholic Church, and because the faith of bishops today is very, very weak. Some of them don't believe that Jesus was God. We are faced with the fact that there is emergent the outline of the American Church they're trying to set up, the Americanist Church, if you want, the Americanist Catholic Church. Uh, it is a wild endeavor to counteract uh, the reform that this pope wants to introduce into the shambles that has become the, the American, the church, Catholic Church in America. And that's why there's nobody to defrock him unless the pope steps in. Well, now, that's my next question. People who hear these discussions and hear what people uh, are saying, priests like you and theologians like you have been saying this kind of thing for years, but... Uh, observers will then come back with something like this. If all of this is true, why doesn't the Pope do something? For example, at General Motors or at Ford or Chrysler, let's take Chrysler, Lee Iacocca sets policy. There would come a time when regardless of what uh, his, uh, his servants, if you will, what, regardless of what the workers at Chrysler, whatever power they may have, whatever the polls, would be, he would fire them at some point. Why isn't the Pope doing this? But, well, the comparison between, between uh, General Motors, the uh, Coca's uh, corporation, and the Vatican Church is like comparing a Zulu crowd to the Bank of England. I mean, the, this enormous worldwide organization is run on completely different lines. And it is afflicted with a completely different uh, ailment than uh, an executive or a CEO in General Motors standing up and saying he disagrees with Lee Iacocca. He, they wouldn't wait for him to put on his cap because that's the way it's set up and structured. The Vatican ch the Church is not structured in that way. And John Paul II is not proceeding to cut off all the heads he could lop off with one stroke of the pen or one telephone call. 
um, he is acting in a different way. He wants the local bishops to do their duty as pastors. He doesn't want to step over their heads just yet. You know, Kevin, if you want to know what is happening to the Catholic Church and the, the, the real feeling, the malaise, it's the very same as the experience I had in an ocean-going liner, which the captain put in reverse. That's the way you stop a liner from, uh, from, from moving. And when the screw of the ship is put in reverse, there's a deep shudder throughout the entire frame of the ship, and slowly it comes to a stop and then reverses. That is what John Paul II is doing at the present moment. There is a shudder running through the entire structure, which is corrupt with theologians and bishops and priests such and nuns such as we are saddled with at the present moment. And they are going wilder and wilder according as the ship slowly, the bark of Peter slowly slows down and then reverses motion. In other words, the tactic and the strategy and the practice in the Catholic Church for ridding itself of these people who claim to be Catholic and are really heretics and have ceased to be Catholics, have excommunicated themselves by the, the way they live and the way they talk and teach and believe or don't believe, and that process is very different from a corporation. And uh, this Pope, as you know, is not in any way out to cut off heads. He's getting at the pastors themselves, first of all, and getting them to do their duty because he could lop off Charlie Curran's head and uh, Richard McBrien's head and several Jesuits and several Dominicans and several theologians and bishops, and then he'd still have a church which was corrupt because he hadn't affected the structure. So in other words, he's got to work through his bishops, even though, according to you now, about half of these bishops are actually in rebellion. Of course. That's a rather tough job, isn't it? Uh, it's a very tough job, and it requires, if you notice, uh, that uh, he has avoided all confrontational things. For instance, when Father McNulty, uh, greeting him in the name of the 55,000 American priests in Miami with bishops present and cardinals present, McNulty broke the rules and uh, asked the Holy Father to reconsider the, uh, the celibacy of priests uh, and to reconsider it and allow them to get married. When he went up later to the dais and was embraced by the Pope, the Pope looked him straight in the eye and said to him, Father McNulty, it's a long, long way to Tipperary. We'll be back in just a moment. We're talking with Dr. Malachi Martin. All news, all the time. News 24 hours a day with CNN. Available for Hornell Cable TV service. CNN News, 24 hours a day. Plus others, special feature programming, including Christian broadcasting. Call Hornell Cable TV for details. 324-4611. You know, more and more folks are getting to the Big Elms every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the luncheon special. You haven't heard about that yet? Well, let me tell you, the Big Elms has really got a winner in this one. The soup and salad bar special in the Victorian. Now, here's what happens. You get a choice of homemade soups, a green salad, a variety of other salads, a relish tray, a sorted cheese tray. Then there's ham and liverwurst and salami. You get uh, beef and a chef's choice of hot dish. All of this plus the greatest bread you've ever had in your life. All at one very low price, too, the Big Elm Soup and Salad Special. Now, it's every Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday at the Big Elm's Victorian, but it's also available on Mondays for special parties and small gatherings. You know, it's not by accident that the Big Elm's got to be one of New York State's great restaurants. And this soup and salad special is really a winner. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at the Big Elms on Seneca Street in Hornell. Dr. Malachi Martin is with us today on the Newsmaker program. We're talking about the papal visit. Dr. Martin is saying that there are really two operations going here in America. The American Catholic Church, which he describes as schismatic and heretical, and the Roman Catholic Church. And you've put in the American Catholic Church the bishop of this diocese. Oh, yes, that's his tendency is to create an American Catholic Church, and the language is always vague. You know, it's an amazing thing when you get, try to pin these people down, Kevin. The language changes from concrete to abstract, and then uh, you hear a series of uh, phrases in which the words have no meaning, and the phrases are tacked together like a prefabricated hen house. It, it, it means nothing. You, it, they, 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 it's very hard to tie them down. Once you tie them down, you find that they are nakedly and openly in rebellion 
and nakedly and openly they don't believe the main dogmas and rules of the Catholic Church, especially the authority of the Pope. Okay, now, Dr. Martin, if we have two operations going here, the American Catholic Church and the Roman Catholic Church, and you're saying about 50% of the bishops are already over in this American Catholic Church, what about the educational system in this country? The system in the, in, in the, Ameri in the ch Catholic Church in America is shot, uh, mainly because of the defection of the nuns and mainly because of the m bad direction given by the local priests and by the bishops. Uh, they no longer teach catechism. Uh, they no longer teach the basic truths of faith. And no wonder the young people no longer understand and know their faith and know what a sacrament is and know what confession is and know what sin is and therefore they're not going to go to mass or confession and they're going to indulge in all the sins that our society, our glorious society, tempts them to commit. So uh, our form, you see this is the difficulty, uh, Kevin, when you mentioned uh, that uh, why doesn't the Pope lop off the head of Charlie Kern? There's so many throughout the church in America, in Canada, Australia, all of Europe, uh, New Zealand, there's so many gone awry, he, he has no way of starting seminaries and schools. He has no way. He must start a reform of the structure itself. And in time, on the trickle-down theory and the, uh, the theory that once you have a good bishop, he can reform his own particular diocese, which he will, this is, uh, this is the only way the Pope can act. What about, what about replacing, if the bishops, and if, if he's not going after Kern, he's not going after McBride and these other ones you mentioned, why doesn't he simply replace a bishop here well, and there? Well, you see, if he, how many, he wants to replace about half our bishops, and certainly three quarters of the uh, Canadian bishops, and probably all of the Australian bishops, and probably one third or one half of, of English bishops, and so on down the line. He hasn't got the men. He hasn't got the men. And then there is the difficulty uh, that some will refuse. And he has a systematic church. In 1949, when the, 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 the bench of Hungarian bishops signed a concordat with the communist government, which was, is always uh, a reason for excommunication, Pastor Trost refused to excommunicate them. He said, each one will die, and we can replace them, because whereas they will die, the papacy will live forever. Dr. Martin, um, you've described a situation here where if we put this to a vote, the yeah. Pope could very well lose. Uh, now, how important are votes, how important are polls in the way the Catholic Church is run? They have no importance at all. Uh, the poll, by the way, you know, uh, Dr. Johnson was once asked about polls and statistics, and he said, well, he said there are three kinds of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. And uh, you, can make, you can take the statistics on the eve of a presidential election and make them favor the Democrat or the Republican according to where you put the question and the people you ask. But all that aside, uh, the issues at stake in the Catholic Church, issues of spirit, are not sociological and they're not uh, b biological or sexual uh, or political. They're of spirit. And that cannot be determined by a poll because only the church in its doctrine and in its wisdom and its infallibility can decide an issue. Dr. Malachy Martin, our time is up. I want to thank you very much for being with us. We've been talking with Dr. Malachy Martin, uh, author of 14 books. His latest is The Jesuits, uh, a bestseller. He's also been uh, seen widely on television, especially in the past few weeks uh, as we've been getting ready for and observing the Pope's visit to this country. Thank you again, Dr. Martin, for being with us. The Newsmaker Program returns tomorrow morning at the same time on the Information Source and News Authority, WLEA. 9 a.m., ABC News, next. WLEA, Hornell. On ABC News, I'm Joe Templeton. They had a three-hour meeting yesterday, and Secretary of State Schultz and Soviet Foreign Minister Shepard Natsar to sit down again at this hour for more negotiating. As Washington and Moscow move closer to a ban on medium-range missiles in Europe and another superpower summit in the U.S. this fall. More from ABC's Herbert Kaplow at the State Department. Secretary of State Schultz and Soviet Foreign Minister Shevardnadze resumed their deliberations here this morning, picking up where they left off yesterday on arms control. Before they get together again, each is expected to get a report from aides on how Soviet and American arms control specialists made out in their discussions together here last night. The general mood still seems optimistic, 
on working out a medium-range missile agreement, limiting the number of missiles able to fly anywhere between 300 and about 3,300 miles. Herbert Kaplow, ABC News, at the State Department. And today's agenda for Schultz and Shabernats includes lunch at the Soviet Embassy in Washington and dinner at the State Department. Their talks are expected to end tomorrow with news conferences by both men. I'll have more after this. Al Jarreau for at and Long Distance. Reach out. It's an easy thing to do. You can make it happen. With just a word or two, you don't need a reason to make somebody day. All you do is reach out, reach out, and touch someone. and whispers so sweet and clear and it feels like they're right here with me I find that wonderful All you do is reach out reach out and touch someone When the love comes right through that's at and the right choice Negotiators for Ford Motor Company and the United Auto Workers Union continued talking throughout the night hoping to avoid a strike by more than 100,000 workers ABC's Gene Fogel in Detroit says their marathon session is apparently paying off. Work has been completed on the thorny issue of job security. The automaker and the union are now putting the finishing touches on an economic package. It is traditionally true that a wage package is left for the last few hours of bargaining. The job security offer from Ford is being referred to as the Guaranteed Employment Numbers Program. Under the measure, all current Ford workers would be protected from indefinite layoff for the three-year term of the contract. Temporary layoffs, though, would be permitted in the event of a downturn in sales. Gene Fogel, ABC News, Detroit. Negotiators in the Chicago teacher strike have agreed to return to the bargaining table today. Pressure is mounting from city officials and parents to end the week-long walkout. Pope John Paul, in his second day in Los Angeles, will meet with 300 American bishops to discuss the state of the Catholic Church in the U.S. The Pope and the bishops are expected to discuss such issues as the desire of so many Catholics to make birth control and abortion decisions independently from the church. Supreme Court nominee Robert Bork told members of the Senate Judiciary Committee yesterday he's neither liberal nor conservative, but he does believe judges should not create new law. He'll answer more questions this morning when his confirmation hearings resume. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that cancer researchers have found that an experimental vaccine made from proteins increased survival rates of a group of lung cancer patients. The findings by the U.S. and Canadian scientists bolster hopes that a new form of cancer therapy called immunotherapy may be in the offing. The researchers point out that the vaccine was given to patients whose lung cancer had been caught in the early stages and who had undergone surgery for their cancer. Europe's Ariane rocket has blasted off from a space center on the northern coast of South Africa. The rocket carried two satellites into orbit. The government report shows 85% of the Social Security beneficiaries surveyed this year rate the Social Security service they received as good or very good when the Irish Press newspaper in Dublin reports that former Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill will play an American businessman in a new movie being made in Ireland starring Peter O'Toole. O'Neill will make his feature film debut in High Spirits, the tale of a haunted Irish castle. This is ABC News. You've never had coffee like this before. Marigold, rich and dark and so much more. Bursting with flavor. New and improved Marigold Dark Roast Coffee, bursting with rich, dark coffee flavor. Marigold Dark Roast Coffee, from Taster's Choice. You've never had coffee like this before, Marigold. New Marigold Dark Roast Coffee, from Taster's Choice. For the ABC Information Network, I'm Joe Templeton. It's 9.05, the temperature 55 degrees. I'm Joy Gilmore with news from WLEA. The Republicans have chosen their candidate for Sheriff of Steuben County. Jerry Dart took 38% of the vote in the five-way primary. Dart carried most of the county. The towns of Poultney, Urbana, and Wayne went to Carl Secondo. He had 19% of the vote countywide. And the entire Corning area, including the towns of Corning, Irwin, Camp Bell, Hornby, and Caton, went to Wayne Cavalier, who also had 19% of the vote. Phil Early had 15% of the vote, and Robert Preston 
9%. In the city of Hornell, the primary race for city judge was very, very close with Judge William Holbrook narrowly defeating Paul Argentieri. Judge Holbrook said this morning he was thrilled with the results and wanted to thank his supporters. Well, I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. I had an awful lot of good people who worked very, very hard and who worked uh, on this for a long time. A bunch of amateurs, I might say, but all good people. And uh, uh, I want to thank all the people who voted for me. They were very gracious. It was a grand election. It was a final. It was a clean campaign. I was very happy with it. Both Holbrook and Argentieri each won five city wards. The final vote was Holbrook, 551, and Argentieri, 501. The only Democratic primary in Steuben County was in the fourth ward in Hornell. Peggy Argentieri is the winner, defeating challenger Joseph Bob by a two-to-one margin. And in the eighth ward, there was a Republican primary for councilman. Incumbent Dave Towner was the winner, defeating Charles Reese, also by a two-to-one margin. A Monroe County grand jury has indicted a Rochester man, the owner of a pet bulldog, on charges of manslaughter and an attack on a Rochester man that led to his death. Authorities say the case against 27-year-old Mark Paris may be the first time homicide charges have been lodged against a person because of an attack by an animal. The pit bull attacked Robert Barbarita at a 4th of July celebration. The man died two weeks later as a result of his injuries, a 15-inch gash on his leg. There's a story in the Rochester paper this morning about an Alfred man, a victim of Hodgkin's disease, who is about to have a very rare bone marrow transplant. Doctors have told Robert Coley, who is 33 years old, that without the transplant, his chances of survival are nil. The new procedure involves removing bone marrow, administering a cancer treatment, and then replacing the person's own bone marrow. Only 50 people in the world have ever had this particular operation. Coley is a mechanical engineer by profession. He was first diagnosed with cancer eight years ago. The weather forecast, sunny today. Increasing cloudiness this afternoon, high 74 degrees. Tonight, cloudy, occasional rain likely, and a low of 58. Tomorrow, continue cloudy, more rain likely, and a high of 70 degrees. Right now, 55, going to 74. And that's the latest news from WLEA, the news authority in Hornell. A Hornell school board member has suggested that the new sports complex at Hornell Senior High School be named the Frank Wyant Sports Complex. This in recognition of Mr. Wyant's years of service to the athletic programs for young people in the Hornell area. What's your opinion? Call the WLEA People Poll today and answer this question. Do you think the sports complex should be named in honor of the late Frank Wyant? Call 324-1482. You have until 8 tonight to call. And then listen tomorrow for results of the People Poll. That number again, 324-1482. Call now.